A few days later, we anchored near the hospital ship Mercy. A number of the Franklin's crew, some of them still on litters, were ferried over to the Mercy. There, with quiet efficiency, the Navy's medical department took over tasks for which the Franklin's sick bay was never designed. In such a hell as the men of the Franklin lived through, more than flesh can be seared. There are sights to be forgotten, experiences which must be erased from the memory. These are the things a chaplain must help them to accomplish. At 10.30 on March 25th, within sight of the hospital ship Mercy, a thanksgiving and memorial service was held on the flight deck for the full ship's company. The skipper, Captain Garys, concluded the memorial ceremonies with a short talk which added up to, well done. A survey party began to evaluate the extent of the damage and make plans for the repairs which would be needed. The flight deck aft of the forward elevator was completely demolished. It had sagged and buckled from the heat and the force of explosions from above and below. The wood planking was char. These gun mounts tell their own story. Under escort, we were on our way back to Pearl Harbor. From certain angles, the old girl didn't look bad. Her masts were askew, but she knifed through the water with some of her old spirit. All the while, debris was being jettisoned. Anything that could be moved was given the heave hole. Pearl Harbor again. It's hard to remember that we entered this same channel only two months ago. We were on our way west then. Again, we were greeted by the same group of waves. The banner was canted, and it waved over more rust than paint, but it was still there. She sailed 102,000 combat miles, and by all the rules they use in this game, she should be sleeping on the bottom off the coast of Japan. But some people don't believe in all the rules. Ten days later, on the 9th of April, the Franklin entered the Panama Canal. Needless to say, there were decorations and citations to be given out. But the Purple Heart Awards had to be delayed until the Franklin reached the canal zone. The supply at Pearl Harbor was not large enough to go around. Journey's end. 704 men sailed her 13,000 miles, the most heavily damaged warship ever to reach port under her own power. In New York Bay, the Whistle Brigade, from deep-throated liners to the family motorboat, screeched a welcome to one of the Navy's great fighting ladies in all her rusty and battered dignity.
final presentation of medals and awards was held on what was left of the flight deck. This was probably the most decorated crew that ever sailed a Navy ship. Every military honor within the power of a grateful people to bestow was worn by these men. If you ever meet a crewman of the Franklin, you'll know he belonged to that band of heroes who brought a lost ship back to port. Months pass, and in one of the huge hospitals where the Navy's hurt ships go, a transformation is wrought which proves beyond all doubt how tough and durable are the vessels that guard our ramparts. Rehabilitated from her broad bows to her broader stern, from her keel to the towering top of her fighting island amidships, the Franklin rides proud and whole once more. A fierce phoenix risen from her ashes, her guns and machinery sealed against inaction, but ready on short notice to defend the peace they so gallantly won through war. Probably Admiral Halsey was thinking of the Franklin when he said, we who had the privilege of serving in and with the flat tops of our Navy and knew the men who fought and lived them shall forever honor their bravery and achievements. A ship that won't be sunk can't be sunk.